Hey guys, it's Brian Black, aka Naia, and I'm here to talk about what the F is drag. Drag is fierce, it's fabulous, and it helps us be free. So I'm here to talk about the history of drag and the future of drag in the Philippines. So without further ado, let's get this show on the road. The question is where did drag originate and you can trace it back all the way to the late 16th century during the era of Shakespearean theater. When the Catholic Church had a hold on the arts, the women were not allowed to perform in such spaces. So the female roles were actually done by men. And the term drag came from how the dress would drag on the floor or on the stage as the men would perform as women. So it's kind of funny now to think about it. Because, you know, drag as an art form, it is inclusive. And it's a bunch of typically, stereotypically homosexual gay men doing female impersonation. So it's come a long way since then. Now you have a lot of performers who are trans and very free to do drag. Anyone can do drag, really. It's not just gay men. Here's always a nice place to add a, your highlight. And with drag makeup, it's all about trusting the process. So right now, I'm giving you Voldemort, but you're gonna see the transformation, mama. So how did drag come about in the Philippines? It didn't come from the West. There was already a concept of drag even before the Spaniards came to the Philippines. And that was with the Babaylan. So the Babaylan, basically some spiritual leaders of our ancestors. It's not so much that they practice drag, but they would be pretty much respected in the community, even though they'd have long hair as men. It's quite amazing to think about how back then there was so much respect towards Filipinos who were not typically subscribed to the heteronormative. Uh, expressions of gender. That's what drag is all about anyway. It's an art form that plays with the concept of gender and deconstructs it. So when the Spaniards came, you know, during the first year of their colonial rule, most of the things kind of got erased. Then you move on to the Americans. During the American occupation, there was already uh, this quite famous gender crosser named Chris Pololuna, aka Lolo Pulong. He would take photos and portraits of himself at Victoria Studios wearing traditionally Filipino female outfits such as barotsaya or the Japanese geisha costumes. There was already that form of drag during the American occupation. American occupation occupy this forehead make that smaller. Let's <laughs> talk about history while constantly this forehead. So drag here in the Philippines, it also existed during the Japanese occupation. You had gay icons such as Walterina Markova who was a drag burlesque performer at the time. However, there was a dark history to it because she was one of the first comfort gays or sex slaves of the Japanese soldiers. That's actually elaborated in the movie Markova, 2000s movie. That's Philippine gay history for you. If you jump to uh, the 60s and 70s, that's when drag started entering the mainstream consciousness. Through films such as Ang Tatay Kong Nanay Ko by Comedy King Dolphy, and that's also when Miss Gay Pageant started uh, becoming more open in the Philippines. Come the 2000s, drag was seen as more of a, a comedy act. You had comedians such as Alan Kay who were performing in variety shows. You know, it kind of gave off this impression that drag was solely just a, a comedy act. Which many times it could be, but now it's also seen as something that is a form of fashion and, you know, education. Like what I'm doing right now, maybe, if you want to call this education. You know what brought drag to the mainstream of the modern era is uh, when the hit TV show RuPaul's Drag Race premiered in 2009. It was quite a small show back then, but now it's a global phenomenon, which has encouraged a lot of young drag artists, myself included, to start drag. It's really quite interesting to see how 
their idea of drag translates and how it's different to our idea of drag here in the Philippines. And of course, you can watch local performers in several bars in Metro Manila. Drag has become more and more accessible. During the pandemic, drag queens performed through Facebook Live. That's how we were able to stay alive during the onslaught of the 2020 pandemic. So a lot of you may be familiar with drag, but you've never actually gone to a drag show or seen a live drag queen. So that's fine. So how do you support your local drag queens? Well, you go to their shows. You go to their shows and you tip us. That's the tipping culture of drag. If you like their performance or you'd like to support their artistry, you go tip them yourselves and interact with the queens. Right now, in the year 2022, a lot is happening in the Philippine drag scene with the production of several TV franchises showing and featuring these queens. So now we did our inner corner and eyeliner. And now the magic truly happens once you remove the tape and see what you've got. So take that off and instant snatched eye. So now watch me magically put on my lashes and my lenses. Now we have our lashes and our lenses on. And I'm gonna go in with some pink lipstick and we're gonna overline. Like you got lip injections. Of course, we're gonna top that off with some gloss and filler. So, as we reach the tail end of our makeup, we also want to discuss what the future of drag will look like in the Philippines. And honestly, the one that so ask another person. Chart. The future of drag in the Philippines is, I think, digital. As drag becomes more and more mainstream here in the Philippines. Expect to see more drag queens on television and on your online spheres, drag queens on the cover of magazines. Because I believe that queer artists are finally getting uh, the due recognition that is um, deserving of them. And honestly, there would be more drag queens. You saw it in the pandemic. There was like a baby boom of baby queens doing makeup at home and that was the perfect time to learn drag, honestly. Most people are aware of the international queens, but they don't know a lot about us local queens. So sad. Please support us. I don't have a setting spray. I don't have setting spray. We're just gonna blush it on. But really, I'm very excited for the next few years of drag. Now we go on to highlight because drag will finally get the highlight this coming year. Honestly, I hope that mega drag will be the key for a lot of Filipinos to enjoy the local drag scene. There is so much potential in our drag scene to boom. You just have to give these artists the opportunity to shine. So now that I'm done with my makeup, I want to introduce you to my wig. Tasty. Hello, Tasty. And we are just going to wear her. No queen is complete without her crowning glory, of course. Oh, I already feel so gorgeous. And now for the finishing touches. I hope you enjoyed our brief look into the history of drag, how it started, and where it's going. Remember, be fierce, be fabulous, and be free. This is Naia for Mega Drag.